Chase Hodge's story is headlined by his dedication and lifelong kinship to tennis. But if you are familiar with this conversation platform, I'm Brian Fenley, a tennis commentator. This is the On to Something podcast. This is a place where we aren't just going to focus on tennis. Absolutely, that is going to be a central theme of this conversation. Chase right now, vice president of Universal Tennis. They are changing the sport in a beautiful way. And it's a place where he is having a transformative effect. But if I were to tell you that that's the only place where Chase is having a transformative effect, I wouldn't be honest with you because there are more ways than one that he is having that sort of influence. And the basis of this conversation, the foundation of what we're doing here is locating all those places where he is doing such things and having that impact from what he's doing at Universal Tennis to how he is a father to how he remembers his late parents and how he won all of those national championships as a tennis coach. I don't know how he has enough room for all the trophies in his house, considering how many he won. We are going to unpack the layers of Chase in a really neat way for you to see a side of him that even his closest friends and family might not have known. A candid conversation that will let you look deep down into what Chase is all about, what he stands for, and what drives him. It's a conversation that starts right now. But before we get going, don't forget to subscribe. Here it is, my chat with Chase. Chase, I am so excited to have you on. Knowing what you have done in the tennis space and beyond, we're going to get that 360 look at you, and it's about to happen. Thanks so much for doing this. Hey, thanks for having me, Brian. Super excited, uh, and thanks for all that you're doing for tennis. Uh, thanks for having me on. Well, you're doing incredible work for tennis. We're going to explore that as well, but also want to learn about the personal side of you and, as mentioned, get that around-the-world kind of look at who you are. And one of the things that defines you is you as a coach and all of the winning that you did as a tennis coach. How did you win so much? <laughs> Um, that's a good question. So it, it really, I mean, it's about building the culture, you know, I, I know that's cliche, but that's reality. You know, I was able to really, you know, recruit high level players that, you know, bought into, you know, our culture and what we were all about and, and build a family atmosphere. And, you know, I always said as a coach, you know, your players can be your best recruiters in terms of, you know, being able to communicate with other players that are, competing, et cetera, tell about their experience. And, you know, during my, you know, 25 years as a coach, um, you know, I was able to really utilize the players in a way where, you know, they were able to continue to to assist because they had the program's best interest at heart. And, um, you know, it, it led to a lot of W's. And as you know, just with anything, you know, winning can solve a lot of problems. Uh, but, you know, it's, it's one of those where obviously we had our challenges throughout my career, um, but winning definitely helps solve many of them. Beyond the wins on the tennis court, where else in your life, Chase, are you winning? Well, I, I, I'd have to say I'm, you know, striving to to win every day as a as a husband and a father. Uh, I, obviously, uh, you know, uh, this current position with Universal Tennis, uh, which I've been in. Uh, over a year now has allowed me to, um, you know, stay at home, work remote, uh, make things happen, uh, see my, my two-year-old son um, grow up and really be a part of these, these early years, which are so important. Um, we also have a 15-year-old daughter uh, who, who lives with us. She just started uh, 10th grade, so I'm super excited uh, to, to be, you know, involved in her uh, high school years, which as all of us know, are extremely important. Um, and, you know, my wife, Vanessa, has uh, been the the backbone in terms of, you know, keeping the family uh, together from a standpoint of handling all the things at home that, that mothers do, which is extremely difficult. So, um, you know, I would say that's that would be, um, you know, pretty much the reality of, of my life now is having the, the opportunity to to be as, as good a father as I can be. So, um, you know, I, I did lose my father. Um, I've lost both my parents, uh, my mother back in 2004 to cancer, and my father uh, passed back in December recently. So uh, you realize time is limited, time is short, and uh, you need to maximize every day, especially as a father. And, um, you know, 
being in a position that I'm in now with, with not having my parents here uh, physically on earth is really kind of rang true for me at this point in my life. How do you deal with that? The fact that they had meant so much to you. And I saw that nice note that you wrote about your father on Instagram in yeah. remembering him and obviously your mom as well and what they've meant for you. How often do you think about them to this day? Every day, every day. Uh, not a moment goes by where, you know, you don't have a reminder uh, of something um, that, that they did for you in terms of uh, being selfless and, and putting um, myself over, over their needs. And, you know, it, it, my dad was, was a coach. Uh, so I grew up, you know, in, in Hickory, North Carolina, small town, um, you know, and I know you went to UNC Greensboro, Brian. So you, you probably know Hickory, um, you know, not too far away, but, you know, he was the head basketball coach at Lenore Ryan college, a small basketball, small division two school there. Um, so I was around a, a coaching family in terms of student athletes, uh, that was around, you know, just being in that environment. Uh, then he, you know, got in the furniture business and then he was a high school basketball coach, high school athletic director. Um, so that team environment, uh, was always prevalent. But one thing that I feel my dad did a really good job of is he never let, um, you know, that kind of take over his existence. It was always a, a secondary focus to family. And, you know, that's something that, you know, I'm, I'm trying to work on every day. So how I appreciate you, all that he's done there. Yeah, no doubt. And how do you find yourself working on that every day? Yeah, it's a process. I mean, it, it's, it's a process. And, you know, it's really for me more from a priority standpoint in, in terms of, you know, not losing sight of, of what priorities should be and, and putting yourself in a position where you have the ability um, to kind of recognize, hey, you know, my daughter has karate tonight. I need to make sure that I, I, I clear my schedule around that karate or, you know, my son starts, uh, you know, two year. He's two, but he's starting school. Um, it's not preschool. They call it day school here in Georgia. You know, they got to meet the teacher night. Got to make sure I, I schedule my my priorities around that. So really, it's all about planning and, and making sure that you can be there for those important moments. Um, at the end of the day, obviously, employment is important. We both know that. Uh, so we got to make sure we we take care of business from that standpoint. But um, I'd say the easiest way is you just got to be super organized. Um, you know, organizations, everything and time management, those two things that, you know, we learned those as a student athlete, you know, when we were competing um, and those ring true here, 47 years old, uh, still managing my time. I'm a little bit different, though, than most. You know, I like the old school in terms of, you know, having a daily planner, you know, and actually, you know, seeing exactly what my day looks like. Uh, for me, that's that's been um, pretty evident in terms of keeping everything together. So that daily planner is a big part of my life. I would assume that you'd be one of those guys with a Rolodex too, even though everything is saved on a phone. Old school. Yeah. Version, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Not, not necessarily the Rolodex, but the daily planner for sure. Uh, I got to, you know, the, the contacts in the iPhone, obviously, but with that being said, I mean, you know, I, I tell you one thing funny is, you know, when I took this job, I, I, I got a new cell phone um, and I had this old cell phone throughout all of my coaching days um, for decades. And, uh, it was kind of different in terms of I feel a little bad for whoever had that got that old number. But uh, it was one of those where it was kind of like starting over again in, in terms of obviously you have your contacts, but it wasn't reciprocated on some end. So um, building that back up now. And uh, it's funny how that works. People can find you, you know, in today's world, uh, you know, sort of like Deion Sanders says, you know, he's, he's not hard to find, you know. So, you know, with social media today. You know, whether it's LinkedIn, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, you know, everyone can find each other. Yeah. And everybody, it's easy to find an article about you as a coach and you what you've done in your career and what you have done as an impact perspective on tennis. You mentioned you as a competitor, obviously, as a coach, as a player yourself. But at 47 years old, as you mentioned now, which you are. Where do you find that competitive side of you coming out the most? Yeah, great question. Um, I would say, you know, a few things that maybe people didn't know about me is, you know, while I was coaching, I owned a business. It's called Gwinnett Tennis. And we ran 
you know, hundreds of events a year in the Atlanta area, uh, tournaments every weekend. We had a full service academy, clinics. Um, it was, you know, a great business that I was fortunate to to found to find, you know, have a about 15 to 20 employees. Um, but it was something that for me, you know, coaching obviously provided that competitive uh, atmosphere, but the business side, which I've um, very thankful to Mark Lashley wow. and Universal Tennis for giving me this opportunity, you know, uh, with the world that we're in, you know, there's no shortage in terms of motivation, in terms of competition, in terms of ways to get better and in terms of ways to improve. And, you know, as a technology platform and technology company based in Silicon Valley, we're, we're all about ideas and, and trying to bring these ideas to fruition and, and, you know, no idea is, is, is a bad idea. Every idea could be a good idea. And, you know, it, it allows you to dream and, and, you know, see some visions come to life. And to me, you know, that that's extremely exciting. Um, and it keeps you uh, extremely competitive. And, you know, I'm just excited for the future. Lots to look forward to when it comes to the future of those dreams that have been fulfilled, that have been seen with Universal. Where have you seen that already play itself out? Yeah, I mean, we've, you know, it, it's it's nonstop. You know, we we obviously were, everyone knew us as UTR, as a rating, and, you know, then we transformed into Universal Tennis, and, you know, there's so many different business streams that, that you know, we're, we're getting into and, and trying to do those um, as good as humanly possible. You know, we just jumped into Pickleball, um, and, you know, we have UTRP, Brian, so I need to find out what your UTRP rating is. Um, so we're extremely excited to, to get involved in that space. Um, but to answer your question, you know, we, in, in the college space, I would say, you know, we, we dreamed up an idea back in March and brought it to fruition in May, uh, which was really cool of, of doing an NIT, uh, sort of similar to what they did in basketball. You know, we put on this NIT championship, had it on Amazon prime. Uh, we had eight men's teams, eight women's teams, uh, that, you know, were not able to compete in the NCAAs. They weren't selected, but these are still very high level teams. And to have them compete for a national championship was extremely special. And getting that on Amazon Prime was uh, incredible. So I would say that was a, a huge win uh, that we accomplished. Um, you know, there's been a, a good amount, but uh, just to single out one, I'd say that was extremely special for me. What else about the direction of Universal is so special to you? Yeah, I'd say the direction, it, it's it, the sky's the limit, really. I mean, you know, that's kind of the, the the mindset is, you know, kind of what I've mentioned is, you know, we have our own pro tour. Um, you know, that's something that we're continuing to drive, uh, you know, we're in close to 30 countries. This is something that we're extremely passionate about. Um, you know, you look at our flex leagues, you know, which are growing all over the country. You look at really the high school space uh, where we've been a, a huge driver. Uh, we have uh, 28 states now that are under mandate or recommendation to be using UTR to get those results. Uh, we just announced a partnership with the NFHS, which is the National Federation of High Schools, uh, where UTR will be the official rating of high school tennis. Uh, so we're really excited about all of those uh, areas. And, you know, we're just going to continue to grow and, you know, continue, continue to be that fabric uh, in the sport of tennis that we've been. And as we move into pickleball, we expect to be that as well. How good of a pickleball player are you? I've only played a few times, so I'm not good right now. Um, but I will say had a lot of fun, you know, it, it had a lot of fun playing and, you know, certainly we'll continue to play. Um, I I'm, I'm on the other end. Maybe I, I think tennis and pickleball are actually going to be helping each other. Uh, I think that, um, you know, you see a lot of tennis players uh, playing pickleball and vice versa. I think it's going to really help the growth in both sports. Um, and, you know, here in Atlanta, as I'm sure out in California as well, I mean, it's it's not going anywhere. It's continuing to grow and, you know, it's exciting to see. What's most exciting to see when your youngest is able to go out? Like I saw you were at the Atlanta Open and yeah, you're yeah. able to take that in. That was a recent event, obviously, on tour. Yep. But for your youngest to see what you do, how much yep. does he get at his age what you're doing and, and how does he show that he's proud of his dad? 
Well, I mean, he's in the background. Hopefully, you can't hear these drums banging in the background. <laughs> the background right now. Hopefully, these AirPods are somewhat canceling that or on this on the Zoom. But um, he's uh, he's taking it in. I mean, he'll be three in November, and you know, for me, it's you know, I I, I personally want to expose him to every sport out there. Uh, the Atlanta Open obviously is a special event here. Um, but you know, we're going to get them to, to some Braves games, some, some Falcons games. Uh, we're actually, uh, going to the U S open, uh, who'll have an opportunity to be up there. Um, so just exposing them to, you know, as much as we can, uh, you know, that's something that I, unfortunately growing up in Hickory, uh, North Carolina wasn't exposed to, to all of these events. Uh, so, you know, getting him in a position where, um, he is, and, you know, over time, appreciate uh, the opportunity to be at those events. But, um, you know, certainly spending time with him every day is a is a joy. And, you know, really looking forward to, to seeing him grow up. It's going to be a lot of fun. No doubt about that. And you mentioned something really interesting to me about how there were things that you didn't get to experience as a child yourself. And yeah. now you're in a place where you are able to allow those things to be seen for your children. Yep. From a, a grand scale, Chase, how big of a driving force is that for you as a dad in that what you didn't experience, you want to make sure is front and center with your own kids? Yeah, I mean, I think that's huge. I mean, you know, ultimately you want your child's life uh, to, you know, you want their them to have, in essence, the potential to have a better life than you experienced. Um, you know, whether that not that happens or not, no one knows, obviously we'll, we'll see how that plays out, but just putting them in a position to be successful. Obviously, I think it's extremely important that they be independent, um, that they're able to make their own decisions. Um, you know, I'm a pretty big advocate in terms of, you know, it's, it's good to fail, uh, because you learn from your failures. Um, I'm by no means, a you know, a helicopter parent, uh, you know, I've, <laughs> Uh, you, you have some out there um, uh, big in terms of allowing them to grow and allowing them to mature and giving them those op opportunities. And, you know, when they do fall, they're going to learn from it and it's going to make them a better person. So, um, you know, that's what I'm all about. And, you know, at the, at the end of the day, you know, when my days are numbered and I'm no longer here on this earth, I'm hoping that they can take, take those same uh, priorities to their children. And, you know, it just continues to live on over time. So, um, you know, I'm not a, yeah, you never know how that's going to turn out, Brian, but all I can do is, you know, put in a hundred percent effort in that regard and see where the chips fall. That's the thing about life is that there's so much where we think we can control, but there's so much that we can't, right? You could do everything. Like you're doing amazing yeah. stuff in so many different places and exactly. it's so hard. How do you fathom that? It's something that every human deals with is like, they have to come to the terms or they try to think they have to, or it's a process that they try to get to, or maybe they haven't accepted it, that you do at some point realize that as much as you can do, and you are doing a whole lot, that some things are out of your control. How as a human have you tried to come to grips with that yeah. dynamic? Well, I mean, for me, and, and maybe it's just my personality, I, I've just completely accepted it. Um, and by accepting it, you know, hey, I don't have control over this. You know, good things are going to happen. Some bad things are going to happen. But at the end of the day, we've got to be able to learn from from all of that and and make it, you know, help us become a better person. And, you know, I know that, you know, God has a, has a plan and, you know, trust in, in his faith. And, you know, that's one thing from a uh, family standpoint, you know, in terms of, you know, you know I, I'll be totally, you know, honest here. You know, I, I feel like for me, you know, God has played a big part in that in terms of trusting the process um, and kind of taking it out of my hands. And, you know, with my kids, uh, you know, being young in age, well, 15 to two being spread out there. But, you know, I, I do feel that that's been an important driving force in, in their life is, uh, you know, having Christ. And, you know, for me as a father, I wanted to instill that in them. And, you know, just like all of us, I'm sure, you know, you, you you, during the college years and, and 20s and 30s, you know, I, I may have lost some focus and sight there, but now I'm back and, you know, really looking forward to the future. But, you know, if you have God in your life, I think that, you know, a lot of things fall into place over time. If you can trust in that. A man of your word, a man of his word. And if you were to look at what you've done 
obviously you've lived out that path and it's beautiful to see chase how your life has gone and in a way in which that we can all be proud of we can all be inspired you are yourself a great motivator you've had to be as a coach but outside of the game itself people can look at you as a great motivator and you might have done a lot of winning on the court but like you said these are the formulas of winning outside of the court off the court that have also made you who you are and what make you such a great asset not only to your family and to tennis but to universal as well and as we wrap up this conversation chase i am thrilled to have you on and i look forward to that moment where we get to meet in person man thanks so much for for being a part of this absolutely hopefully maybe i'll see you in new york if you're going to be there um if not you know let's definitely plan some time look forward to it